Today we're inviting you to join us in Italy as we're meeting up with a born and bred Italian with a penchant for adventure. He's inviting us to discover some pretty strange Italian traditions really? and yeah. places we've never seen. This story will definitely bring a smile to your face, but it will be our last adventure for a while, because with countries across the continent heading into lockdown 2.0, we must leave Europe imminently. That is, if we can. We are driving around the world, you guys are invited too. So subscribe and buckle up. It's one heck of a ride. It's a beautiful morning here today. I feel like I woke up in an awesome wonderland. It's absolutely gorgeous up here. We've got the whole place to ourselves. Elevation 750 meters. The sun is shining, it's not too cold. I can't believe how beautiful Italy is. I have to just say, I cannot believe how beautiful Italy is. I'm a little bit ignorant. I know Italy is like a, a very well-known country, but not to me. Um, and so everything I'm discovering here is a new discovery and you know one of the exciting things about travel is going to a place where you really don't know too much about it and then learning that the landscape is so mountainous and so varied it's awesome one thing's for sure italians definitely love their church bells and they definitely love their hunting we're hearing um shooting pretty much at every single campsite we wake up at so you've got to keep Alaska on a, a tight leash. Today we are going to meet somebody. We have two days left in Italy um, and then we have to make some, some big decisions about what we're going to do and where we're going to spend winter. So um, let's go and meet up with combi crew member Riccardo. We're not usually ones for traveling quickly, but in the past week we've road tripped from the Italian Alps, spent a minute in Venice, a hot bath in Tuscany, and now with time fast running out, we've done a complete 180 and we're northbound, covering some serious miles in the combi. The downside is that we've had to miss out on a lot of Italy, but we made sure to tick a couple of locations off the old bucket list on the way north. Now we're here on the western coast of Italy in the large port town of La Spezia. And this is Riccardo. Riccardo, look. Already one problem. It's the starter. You see that? You said starter and it started. <laughs> Seriously, I had my key, a hand on the key the whole time. You're like, you're like a, a Volkswagen good luck charm. Ricardo is a Combi Crew member and we introduced him to you back at the Combi Crew meetup in the UK. Uh, our original plan was to travel the whole uh, Pan America from Alaska, but we bought this van here in UK, so we shipped it to uh, the east coast of US and uh, we started from Baltimore in the east coast and then we drove up to Alaska and then we came down up to Panama. For Ricardo and his wife Sara this was one of those adventures of a lifetime kind of trips. One where they would need to be resilient building confidence in their own problem solving skills as they overlanded in tough winter conditions across the North American continent. The only problem is that we woke up like this. <laughs> anyway, it's beautiful here. We are in the middle of the desert and it's snowing at the moment. <laughs> who, who could tell that it could snow also in the desert? This is my speciality. Coffee made with snow. Right? Perfect. And a little bit more of coffee. Good morning, uh, world. We are doing something like uh, 50 kilometers of uh, gravel road. As you can hear it, it's a bit chilly outside. It's almost December and um, we are in the desert, uh, almost desert, I would say. And we are very uh, high in altitude. Um, I don't know, maybe 2,000 meters. 
Uh, this morning it was uh, minus three degrees in the van. Uh, all the windows were frozen. And yes, well, the good side of it is that it's not 50 degrees during the day, like in summer. <laughs> so it's a bit more enjoyable for that. A lot of people dream of this kind of trip, but few are brave enough to actually do it. But if there's one thing that I've learned about overlanding, it's that none of us know what we're doing. We're all just figuring it out one challenge at a time. And that's the way it has to be, because you can never anticipate what the road will throw at you next. This is how you drive a Volkswagen with a shattered glass. Rough and uh, bumpy, <laughs> to say the least. Now, here in La Spezia, Ricardo is showing us around some of his favorite places in his hometown. <laughs> sure. We haven't had a great deal of opportunities to eat out with the current pandemic situation. And obviously, the exquisite food in Italy is some of the best in Europe, and perhaps the world. We were super keen to see what was being served at Ricardo's favourite Cucino Locale. We've been with Ricardo now for like, what, an hour? And this is the first time we've seen his face, because we're about to eat something. Um, we couldn't go out exploring without having a meal. I'm so pleased that we've been able to connect here in Italy you know, since the last time we met in the UK. The food is much better here as well. Why have you brought us to this place here? Oh, because um, it's a cheap uh, eat, uh, but with good food. So that's the best combination, I think, right? What's the name of the restaurant? It's called I Pescatori. I Pescatori, which means the fisherman. The fisherman. We're right by the coast, so why not take advantage of the great seafood? You recommended a couple of dishes here, right? This is Mediterranean anchovies. And then uh, this is the best mussels you can have in, in Italy. Really? This is we your are favorite? proud of it. Stuffed mussels. We put ham, we put uh, bread, we put uh, parsley, egg. Is this a local uh, speciality? Yes, it is. As in, this is my favorite dish. What, uh, what's it called in Italian? Yeah. Uh, muscoli ripieni. Well, that's a mouthful, isn't it? All right, let's dig in. I'm, I'm excited. Oh my goodness. Did you choose this food just to embarrass us because we can't actually <laughs> open it? Finally. Oh man. Yum. Stuffed mussels. I didn't even think you could stuff a mussel. Yeah. And this is another typical fish. It's called triglia. This is the Italian that. fish and chips. It this is, is kind the of Italian the, fish and chips, yes. Yeah, it is kind yeah. of the Italian fish and chips. Let's see if it's better than the British fish and chips. Oh, Maybe it's some, less filling. There's some <laughs> stiff competition there. Definitely less filling. Yeah, it looks like filling. Ooh. Crispy. Yeah, nice. From La Spezia, the coastline is gorgeous. The most famous and touristic location is the World Heritage Site of the five colourful coastal villages of Cinque Terre. The twisty mountainous lanes to get up there are long and precarious, so we opted to head to the nearby Porto Venere to catch the sunset. Look ahead, the sea is calm, and I know we've been through a lot, but just wait. For better days to come and carry us like wind in our sails. You can tell Ricardo also has a Volkswagen. The first thing he did after getting out of the car was go and find some rocks to put under the wheels. I wouldn't trust a Volkswagen. Do you know that it's one of the prettiest towns along the, along the coast. Actually, probably the best one. Better than Cinque Terre. Be better than Cinque Terre. Oh, yeah, well, all around here, there are mussel farms, uh, like the mussel we ate earlier. Oh! Gotta be honest, we don't have a lot of time in Italy, but seeing the coast here now, I can't believe how beautiful this country is. I definitely want to come back and see more. I know I say that all the time about pretty much every country I go to, but 
Oh my days, Italy is beautiful and extremely diverse. There's so much to see here. I just, I want to stay here forever, honestly. Ricardo, look in, uh, under the, in the dash there, under the umbrella. Uh. <laughs> you remember this? Did you have to use these in Europe? Not yet. <laughs> <laughs> but it goes everywhere with us, right there, just in case. This is the, called the World, Worldless Travel Book, which is like a universal dictionary, I think. So you can uh, point at pictures if you need something while traveling in a country where uh, you don't understand the language or they don't understand you. Oh, oh God. Yeah, what the hell's that? I need a jump start for my camel. <laughs> <laughs> this is what kind of gibberish book is this? No wonder you haven't used it. <laughs> what the hell? One day this will be useful. Yeah. But Actually, can I have it back? No. <laughs> <laughs> On our last day in Italy, we were wondering what Ricardo does around his hometown for fun. And it turns out the blessings of this region just keep coming. Whenever we go traveling, we like to connect with locals and do what local people do. And Ricardo likes to climb. Um, so we are accepting the challenge and going to attempt to go up there. Okay, let's do this. I thought Italian footwear was much nicer than this. <laughs> Outdoor adventurers travel from far and wide to the limestone crag of Muzzerone, with grades accessible to all abilities and absolutely stunning views of the Mediterranean Sea Muzzarone is a climbing paradise. There are a lot of climbers in the van life community and it's easy to see why. With the ability to travel following your passions and the opportunity to wake up wherever you want with all of your gear means adventures are affordable and plentiful. <laughs> Climbing dog. Have you ever seen something like this before? What is this crazy? You can't see your hands. Oh my god. Wow, well, I can see the whole top of the mountain down here. <laughs> what? Wow. That's cool. You look cool, Leah. It's for looking up that without hurting your neck all day, yeah. looking like this. That's really freaky. Ricardo has been climbing now for four years and has been able to climb with his van, Dougie, and his wife, Sara, in both America and Europe. Yoo-hoo! Italia troppo bella! And I too am quickly starting to fall in love with this sport. Not only is there an obvious physical challenge and connection with nature, but the problem-solving element of rock climbing is particularly appealing. A lot of people mistakenly think that they are not fit enough or strong enough to even try this sport, but it really is accessible to all abilities and I hope more people will give it a go. Okay, and dogs. Such confidence, he just goes for it. <laughs> Time has come. Um, you can't start the combi. I tried pushing it and it won't work. So luckily you know a trick, right Ricardo? Uh, yeah. <laughs> I've done this for six months. Somebody said that you're going to start your... My van with this. You're going to start your van with what? With this. With a hammer. Yeah. You're pro. I don't know it. Know it. <laughs> you can fix it, but we just don't have time right now. You should be doing this. You're, you, you're the professional. You mean the clutch. Oh, you shit, he drives automatic. <laughs> okay, make sure you have your foot on the clutch, the left one. After climbing, Ricardo offered to prepare some food in the combi. Italian in the kitchen. Normally, if an Italian offers to make food, you say yes. But I don't know, I've heard some of Ricardo's stories. Mm. This is how you cook a pizza in your Volkswagen. <laughs> this is a quick and easy Italian uh, van life dessert. For a recipe of eight people, you will need four eggs, Leah! Oh. <laughs> you had one job! How did I do that? It just jumped out of my head. You need the Italian grip as well. Leah, I need the fork on the table. 
<laughs> hey, you better not a fork on my table. Sugar. Two spoons and a half. Fork, me I'm a faster fork. <laughs> I like it a faster fork. Why don't you use a whisk? Because I like the fork. <laughs> and van life, we don't have. You know, you have to use whatever is in your van. My grandma, instead of a fork, she used to do do it with a spoon. You need to do it up, up to the point that when you turn the, the bowl, it doesn't come down. Done. Mine is done. You're the faster fork. Yours is not done. I'm not a faster fork enough. You're the faster fork. You're the slow fork. No, I like a slow fork. <laughs> yeah. yeah. What kind of cheese do you use to hide a horse? A mascarpone! <laughs> you need to put this the foam into that. A mascarpone with eggs. When you mix it, try not to break the foam. Of course. Right. It gets colder quickly. So while we were waiting for the coffee to cool down for the next step, we decided that we are going to test Ricardo on his knowledge of the Italian gestures. Is that one? <laughs> Which, I don't know if that is one. This one. What do you want? What about this one? Am I doing it right? I don't care. <laughs> I feel like that. I might adopt that. That sounds like... Okay. That's not Italian, sorry. That's American Italian, I think. What's this? Mmm. Perfect. Perfecto. Yeah, that was actually the next one on the list as well, Leah. Leah well, well done. What about this one? Oh. Is this a real one? This is good food. Really? Yeah. Ooh. <laughs> That's a cute one. Mm. I like that one. What about this one? Pay attention. It says, uh, watch out, pay attention. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. He's got it. You are real Italian. Yes. What about the... See you later. Have you seen this one? Mm, no. We'll catch up another ah, time. Yeah, but it's this, it's this way. See you later. Oh, okay, yeah. so it's like this. It's like this. We see you later. Yeah. Not like that. <laughs> it's like, see you later. Are <laughs> oh, you pretty good at it? So it's like the English people trying to do Italian gestures. This is wrong. A little like, bit. Uh, what, what about this one? This is definitely for me. <laughs> Next, we use this type of biscuit. It's a very dry biscuit. We put it in the coffin. Can you tell what it is yet? The last part is undoubtedly the hardest. Refrigerate, then wait as long as you can resist it. So the Italian van life, quick dessert that you don't need to cook is in fact tiramisu. Tiramisu in Italian means lift me up. You need this in the morning to wake you up. That's why it's called like that. This was created as a breakfast food. What? My mind is blown. I didn't know tiramisu was a breakfast food. Ricardo's van life speciality. Oh, it's good. Mm. Cooking with Ricardo. Could be a whole new Hombi life spin-off. Okay, put the red light on. Yeah. From here, we've only got a few days to get out of Europe and we are far from an international border. Worse yet, our travel routes are now severely limited by the pandemic. And of course, our combi boomerang is now no longer starting at all. Should have seen that coming. Ready? The final chapter of this journey is going to be interesting, but that is a story for next time.